This video is designed to introduce you to the concept of responsive web design and what that means and what it looks like. In front of me I have the library.org which is a website obviously for the Greene County Library here in Springfield. And back in the day when websites were first created, all websites were created. We didn't have iPhones or smartphones so all websites were created very similar to this. This is a very common look in which the width was pretty much the same. This website's going to look the same no matter what desktop, which was what it was designed for, uh, whatever desktop it was displayed in, it's going to look pretty much the same. If you make the window smaller and you exceed the minimums or the maximums of this screen, we just are going to have scroll bars that show across the bottom. We lose a lot of that screen. Well, that was perfectly fine, but then the iPhone came along and the iPhone gave us something that we never had before and that was the ability to see a website on our smartphone or on a smartphone. And so what iPhone did was simply took this website that no longer fit in a viewport that was about 380 pixels wide and it just shrunk it down. So now we were looking at the same website except it was shrunk and so now we could see it in a very minified version but we could squeeze our fingers or spread our fingers and that would give us the ability to zoom in on particular parts of that website. Well that was really cool for a little while but people soon got tired of having to zoom in and out, especially people with older eyes that couldn't see as well and with the prolifer proliferation of all kinds of different devices, the iPads, the Galaxies, all the different phones came out, all the different viewport sizes, or screen port sizes and so a new idea, a new concept has come into play and that's the concept of responsive design. So I'm going to pull up this website. This is why I'm broke.com. It's a great site to lose some time in. And what happens is what I want you to do is watch what happens now when I make this screen smaller. With the library site, we saw that eventually we just got a scroll bar across the bottom. But I'm going to move this window size smaller and let's see what happens. When I get right about here, did you see the change in the menu up here? So right here, right off the bat, our menu looks different. That didn't happen on the library site. So we call this a breakpoint, meaning when we hit a certain uh, pixel size, something is going to change, and we do this through CSS, which you're going to see in this next unit. So I'm going to pull up this site called mydevice.io, and this is kind of neat because it's measuring the current viewport size, and that's the term we use to determine from this point of uh, this point of our screen and so we can see that at approximately 1000 pixels we have a break point a break point meaning at about a thousand pixels something is changing on our site so with our CSS we'll have the ability to say if our screen size is less than a thousand pixels we want to use we're going to display a little different menu let's keep going with that concept so now I'm going to make this a little smaller we see three columns and a razor turret wireless lap board. That looks great. When I bring this column in or the viewport in smaller, all of a sudden I now have two columns instead of the three. And instead of the third column just not appearing to the right, it actually is now being displayed. It wrapped down and it's now two columns instead of three. And if we notice, so we've said there's a break point that was set at 750 pixels. And somewhere in the CSS code at 750 pixels, the layout became two columns instead of the three. So we're going to continue on and watch the site even further. And right about there. So now I have at about 450 pixels, I can see that I now have one column instead of the two. So we call this breakpoints, and you'll see how to do this in your CSS. So it gives us the ability to, utilizing the same CSS code we have, look at different viewport sizes or breakpoints. And when we hit different breakpoints, we're going to ask our CSS to lay out a little bit differently. Let's look at another site that does a really good job of that. Hmm, this one hopefully looks familiar. This would be a good site to use if you would like some reference on some of your CSS styles. So at, let's see where we're at, we're at 1459 pixels. And I can see that I have menus, I have 
uh, some headings, and I also have some sample code. Now, oops, I didn't mean to slide it down. Doesn't really matter. If I drag my viewport smaller, notice at approximately where we're at, about a thousand pixels. Oops, wrong site. I now lost my menu system that was on the left-hand side. Pull that back out so you can see it. The menu appears, and then at a smaller viewpoint, that menu is no longer visible. My code has now no longer side by side. The code has been pulled down into one column instead of the two. And if I continue on with that example, now you can see when I'm even a smaller viewport size, then I have, looks like a little drop down, a little hamburger menu as they call that. Notice my code has gone away and now I just have the topics. This is much easier to view in a uh, smartphone than to have all of that extra text. So that's the idea with a smartphone. You give minimal, uh, to, you get rid of a lot of the text because you can't display a lot of it in a smartphone. But you give, them use, you give the users different options to click on to get where they want to go. Um, so if you look at this site in your smartphone, this is what you should be seeing. If you look at on a desktop, then you'll be able to see all the full text displayed. The book talks about, I'm going to right click in, I'm using Firefox here, and the book does this example in Chrome, so I'm going to use Firefox as an example. They're similar, although a little bit different. If I go into my developer tools, and I'm going to use the W3 schools as an example, in my developer tools, we have an uh, option for if I hold my mouse over, you see responsive design mode. So I'm going to click on that button. And in Firefox, we have the ability to have some predefined common viewport sizes. In other words, phones are usually 320, 360. So I can view my site as it would appear in a smartphone. Or keep going, you can see the various breakpoints and, and the difference that my site would look like at those various breakpoints. So those are some tools that are available to give you an idea where I want to set breakpoints, what are a breakpoint, and you'll see in this chapter how we define breakpoints and how we at those certain breakpoints to use our CSS to lay out columns or lay out our, our websites in different ways. So let's explore that this chapter.